Um, Pete, how many podcasts have you done? What my own ones? Yeah, your own people's. One. How many? How many other people's have you done? I can't even count, mate. And I'm not entirely sure why, because <laughs> I am not particularly interesting. So I think it's just because I generally insult everyone. Mm. People love it. You're one of these people, actually, which I think is like uber interesting because people want to get to like understand you, you. Understand it more fucking chill. This, this, I swear this, to this, God this translation did uber I just interesting. Oh, you're did... such a cock <laughs> <laughs> it's just uber interesting it, what, <laughs> it's true though it's I true I mean obviously we've been in this this whole yeah. weird game for a long time yeah, yeah, yeah. so you pick up loads of different stories along the way don't yeah. you know, that, that are generally quite interesting it's like the inside breaking the fourth wall shit innit mate always I did, but same with me did you did you always want to go into something like this or did you just randomly fall into it? Absolutely not. I completely fell into it. I had a real job, like dignity and a career before all this. And then now I'm just sort of like a, a bum. Mm. But, um, but no, I absolutely didn't. I've never watched any reality TV. Mm. Never watched myself on TV on anything I've ever done. Mm. And don't watch any of that stuff. I don't listen to podcasts. I don't have TikTok. I don't have any of that stuff. I would quite happily just sit in a tree house in a forest in the middle of nowhere surrounded by dogs and goats and that would make me very, very happy. And actually, that's what I'm working towards. Shut up. I'm dead. This is no. Completely, I swear Shut to up. completely off grid. There'd be no sexy fish. Uh, I, I fucking hate sexy fish. <laughs> Get out of here! No, I do, but if you go a little bit further up, Amazonico, that's great. Oh, yeah, you like Amazonico. We, like... <laughs> we like that one. We like that one. Barclay Square, it's, it's bang on there. Because I saw this, you were, um, you were working in the city as a job yeah. and then... Your mate Lockie started doing a Towie, yeah. and you were saying like, "Well, I'm going to go and do that because this feels like a good idea." Because you were bored of the 16 hour like workload yeah, and shit like that. Fucking wild, mate! Like being in the city, like because I've done that since I was like 17. Yeah, and so uh, out of school, left school, straight into it. Yeah, basically. It's, well, left school, yeah, sort of. Um, <laughs> and yeah, just went straight into that, and it, it was just heavy. I would have burnt out to be honest with you. I've done it for nearly ten years. I was twenty six when I when I stopped in the city, and I would have just burnt out, mate. Really? Yeah, mate. It's, it's just so so hard. Well, give it to me, like boozing. Like, what is boozing, it? Boozing, fucking constantly. Out. It's so easy um, to to forget to have any sort of routine. You, you have your routine yeah. been at work, but you have late nights and you go straight out and you're you know, showering in the office, wearing yeah. the same fucking clothes the next day, like doing all that sort of mad shit. Were you really doing that? Yeah. They, what do they call it? They call it magic roundabout or something yeah, like that? It was, it was, yeah, it was heavy for a long time. That's why I look like this, mate. That's why I look like I've been dug up. Do you know what I mean? I literally look like I've been dug up somewhere um, because yeah, the first years of my life were pretty well, wild. I, I, my buddy Spencer, he was a broker for ICAP. Um, and he says, he and he, he does something called like blue chip something or whatever yeah. It was before, yeah. And he just said it was just Mate, it's full on. The, the, the whole culture there is wild. Yeah, the, I mean, the culture is just crack, like it's literally 100 mile an hour all the time. Really? So, so yeah, so, so doing what I've ended up doing is just, it's a better quality of life. Because you get to do some cool, like, cool things that you wouldn't normally get a chance to do, do you mm. know what I mean? But I, I, I still struggle with it now because I've got. I have to be busy all the time. I have to be working all the time. Mm. Like I've never had a sick day. I'm never fucking late for anything. I never, I've got that mentality of just work and this is not normal, is it? You do some no, weird it's, things. Mate, it's, but it's, the, it's the graph that we have. But, I, but also, I, I don't know where like, where do we get that? I have the graft as well, like you. Mm. I fucking, I, I, I love it. Yeah. I love it. I don't know why. People go like, you know, like I saw this thing the other day. It's like people go like, "Oh, you should probably like chill out a bit." It's like, well, why would I chill wow. out on the stuff yeah. that I love doing? Yeah, like, like doing it, especially for me because I'll um, I'll probably be dead soon. So <laughs> if I make it to forty, I'll be lucky. So I need you got just, past that twenty seven club. I, 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 I only just <laughs> same so as I me. Just, I, just, yeah. I just need to really crack on. Um, <laughs> but but, but yes, yeah, so I, I find it really. Hard. I don't have holidays. Do you not? No, I find it really hard to be on holiday. Well, because you can't relax. Yeah, I can't relax. I can, I can relax. You have like, you have that first three days on holiday where you're like, oh, this is nice, I've got nothing to yeah. do. And then I'm like, I need to do something. Um, so I just start doing random shit on holiday. Like, do, do you know what I mean? Like, I'll start clearing up plates in the hotel. And, <laughs> Shut up. You know what I mean? Give me Wait, you'll start just cleaning <laughs> yeah, I'll just, I'll just picking up glasses from around the pool and that. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've got to have something to do. Um, but take, I want to understand that. So you, you... Because like with all these things, like, like it's so boring to go into it. But but childhood like kind of brings you to like what what you are, right? Mm. So you started you were you were in school, but also working in the city at the same time. It feels like no, I, I was working. I was working in school. I um I didn't do like higher education. Um, what was family life like? Uh, family life was good. Like it was my mum and dad divorced when I was at eleven. Yeah. 
and my old man left so it was just kind of like um i had pretty much worked from the age of 13. So really I'd, yeah i'd like fucking two paper hands and i started being a glass collector in a hotel doing 30 yeah. hours a week while i was still at school at fucking 14. um Man. just because i wanted to fucking earn my own money do my own thing like i don't um you know i'm not like all of you lot with trust funds <laughs> um, <laughs> i had to get it in there um <laughs> really pissy sam off as well because he's the poor one he's not <laughs> he's the poor he, he's not and, and they just tell him like, all he says to me he's like i'm the poor one he's not because he he sits on a two million quid house that exactly it, that, that he was just given we've had that he was just given um, it's it's wild to me i know i know he doesn't pay rent um <laughs> no well no he's had to remortgage actually okay uh because he's just done dug his basement half of the, <laughs> he's dug his basement out but at one point he was gonna have a plunge pool um <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's just become an entertainment room. Um, <laughs> and the cat's room. Um, the only person I know, the cats have got a bedroom each. Um, <laughs> also, just quickly on um, Sam's cats, the funniest thing in the world. He got these two little, sweet little, snowball, tiny little cats. Ragdoll. Ragdoll ones. Yeah. He didn't realise that they grow into polar bears. They, they are massive now. But I find the weirdest thing about Sam and the cats and Zara is that the cats have got names, some fucking Harry Potter shit, mm. and, uh, but they, they call them different names every, every day, basically. <laughs> One day it's Bunny and we've got, do you know what I mean? Like, and I feel like the cats are just really confused, um, having some sort of identity <laughs> crisis, because every day, and the worst thing is when you go to Sam's now, yeah. um, you say hello to him, you say hello to Zara, and then he won't speak to you until you've said hello to the cats. So you have to go and find the cats around the house just to say hello to them. <laughs> what? Because they're, cause they're important. They're well, like... Of course, well, yeah, of course, they're like the kids. Do you know what I mean? So you have to go and say hello to the cats. And I think you are a cop. Every time. Do you know what I mean? I'm wandering around this fucking house trying to find a fucking cat. Uh, All right, cat. Do you know what I mean? Because I can't call it by name because I don't know what it's called that day. Um, so, oh, yeah, God. So, so, okay. So you're, you're grafting from an early age. Um, what? Because... Is that because you kind of... You... You... you liked the idea of like having that freedom so you were like in order to get freedom of myself i need to earn money uh -huh. and if i earn money that means i can escape yeah 100 percent. my old man um did right for himself and when he kind of left um I, I felt i needed to look i was paying my mum from like 13. Wow. do you know what i mean like because i felt like i needed to to try and be the geezer do you know what i mean that that, that sort of thing so um so i just started working non-stop really um and because i wanted to go and do things for myself i like nice things like yeah. everyone likes nice things i wanted to be able to be in a position where i could do nice things for other people and so yeah so pretty much from a quite an early age i've just worked do, relationship with your dad how is it now don't i have nothing to do with him don't speak to him so really be yeah yeah. Fuck man. Yeah, but it's it's my mum is like my best friend, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I know. And, and my mum and then like you know, that's all that really matters to me. I don't believe in this family stick in the water um shit, do you know what I mean? You can meet people that you know five minutes that have got better intentions for you than, than people you've known your whole life. So Wait, hang, um, let's get into that though. So, but is that but is that because of your experience with it all? No, I just I just think a lot of um a lot of the time and it's not because my dad's a bad person, he's a good guy, it's mm. just we, we just don't have a relationship. Um and that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. But um but, but that's but that's a that's a tough attitude to have. Yeah, maybe, but then that's why I always I really like meeting people and meeting new people and, and regardless of whether you get on with someone or you disagree with someone, you can learn from someone. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can learn from, from, from anyone you meet, regardless of whether it's someone that you want to be in your life or not. Yeah. And people come to your life for different reasons and they add to your life and um, you know, you can take away lessons from, from, from good situations and bad situations. So, you know, look, we don't have a relationship and, and, and that's that. There's not much I can do about it. But it hasn't kind of stopped me wanting to be around people that do bring something to your life. Mm. You know what I mean? Like if, if people are, are, are not bringing something to your life, which is beneficial or um, making you feel, uh, giving you some sort of peace of mind, then there's no point having them there. You just cut them off. So you, you can do that. You can have that ability. Yeah, I'm pretty I, I, savage with that. Yeah. yeah, but that's a good thing, dude. I swear to God, like I, I spoke to someone, where, I, I, can't remember, I think it was Ant Middleton of all people. He said to me, you got to treat people like mold. If they've got mold, you cut them. And I was like, Jesus, that's savage. I, I don't have that within me because I- You're soft as shit, enough. I'm just too sensitive. I'm too yeah. sensitive. But yeah. you're sensitive as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we've, if you're in my little circle, I'll do anything for anyone. Do you know what I mean? Really? Like I will do anything for anyone. And, and regardless of every... Good people make mistakes. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Bad people do good things and good people do bad things. That's that's the way the cookie crumbles. But it's, it's, it's whether or not deep down you think that person is a good person and has got any sort of authenticity and sincerity about them. Mm. That's the sort of people that I want to be around. Even if they fuck up or whatever else, then you forgive that. But some people are just not people that you think they are. Mm. Does that make I, it, make, it makes total sense. What you what you you're after is that authenticity with individuals, and you can see when they're which not being authentic. Considering I've done, done a reality show, right? <laughs> yeah, you know I mean? man, which is full of unauthenticity. It's it's not authentic in any way. But I I always saw that, and I don't know how you ever saw it when you did it like, as a business. Yes, one hundred percent. Like you know, some of the people in there are good friends of mine, but the the, the, the rest of my colleagues, mm. when we're not filming, I don't spend time here. Yeah. Because I'm not contractually obliged or paid to. <laughs> I don't need to tolerate you in this point. Do you know what I mean? Um, and it's not that, that I have anything against them, but you're not you're not one of my close kind of friends. And I think it was very different actually for me, like when I did all that sort of stuff. Because you guys, when you all started, were all actually quite. We're all tight. mates. We're all yeah. mates. And then as you, as it kind of evolved, like the shows, they had in people that aren't really part of your, your group, and mm. they do become just colleagues, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, whereas I, I only really knew Lockie, so so everyone there, I developed friendships with a few people, but the rest of it. They were colleagues. Yeah, but it's it, it, okay. Just from like seeing from an outside point of view, okay, you're 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 doing this job in the city. You're having fun. You're going for it, and then you go and join Towie. Completely wild. Completely freaking wild. Yeah, and do, I've never seen it. You've never seen it. You've never seen any reality show. No. You go like, all right, I'm going to go and do this. Firstly, like you you're, you've come from a pretty like uh, like alpha male situation where you know we know the sort of stories from the city mm. and things like that. Where you're you then have to. It really, I tell you what it does show you, most people don't go and do reality shows, right? It's because um, either they hate it and they just really don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, either they want to do it, but they're too embarrassed to go and do it because yeah. they don't want to look like a fool or whatever it is. You know, or they're kind of young and they make decision to do it because they're like, oh, this is going to be great. You, you were at a certain age where you were conscious, yeah. you also, it just shows you, you don't care what people think it feels like. No. So you just went and did it because you're like, oh, this is just going to go and be an experience. Yeah, it'd be an experience for me. I didn't know what was going to happen. But it went a bit mad for me because at the time, I think it's very different the type of people that do reality TV now to yeah. when we did it. Do you know what I mean? Well, like what's when, the difference, do you think? Like, well, because we didn't really know what the fuck we were doing. Reality TV wasn't a fucking huge, massive thing. Mm. Now people do it because they want to be the next blah, blah, or the next blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? No one does it as themselves anymore. Yeah. That's why I think reality TV is dead. Because it's not reality anymore, is it? It's a game then, show. It's, yeah, a, game it's show. a game show, mate. Like people see it and they want, you know, what do you want to do when you're older? I want to be a fucking influencer. I want to do this. I want to do that. That's that, that was never around when we did all that. So we did it kind of like, well, fuck it. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I didn't know, and it went a bit mad for me because I think at the time there wasn't really any blokes that looked like they woke up in a weedy bin. Do you know what I mean? There weren't people covered in tattoos, long hair, and all that sort of stuff. Whereas now every fucker and his 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 friends got a fucking sleeve and long hair. So, um, and everyone, everyone you meet down the street has, has, has been on TV. Or yeah, 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 yeah. Because there's a million shows. It's yeah. so saturated now with people that want to be on TV because they see the successes of other people. And actually, not that many people are successful. No, they're not. Really not. No, they're really not. And also, it, it, especially, I say this to everyone, I got a friend of mine who um, sent me a message saying that her 19-year-old brother is starting Made in Chelsea and can I get advice? And I don't I, do it, dude. <laughs> mate. I fucking I, I I said to her, I said, you're you're not gonna like what I my response is. Yeah. And she said, oh, can you just say it to me? And I said, okay, I'll say straight away. He's too young yeah. to make a decision because it's gonna impact future. Yeah. Um, he's coming into a show that's 12 years old, and he's not gonna be top of the food chain. And you got to be top of the food chain to get any airtime. Yeah. Um, he if he doesn't have anxiety now, get ready. That's gonna start kicking <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, that's gonna come. That's gonna come knocking at the door yeah. pretty quick. Um, and I think that he should wait a couple of years until he really knows what he wants to do and make decisions. And he said, listen, I, I, I've told him all these things, but I can't stop and do it. And, and it's like, wait, hang on. These freaking reality shows are just picking lives. Yeah. But they're, they're picking people based on what people say they are about. Yeah. And a lot of people that do reality don't know who they are. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, 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 and that's the thing. So, so they're pretending to be something, and you can only do that for so long. You can only pretend to be something you're not for so long. And then you get caught out. And then you get caught out, and that's when it all comes crashing down because then you don't know how to deal with it because you haven't found who you are as a person to be able to deal with those sort of situations. But this is what I fucking said for so long. Yeah, and um, do you know what, mate? If I had my time again, I wouldn't do it. Would you not? No, I wouldn't get do out it. of here. I swear, I swear to God, and that's no disrespect to, um, and I say this all the time, actually, like on on mine and Sam's podcast and anything I do. Yeah. I owe Towie a lot for the way my life is now. Mm -hmm. Completely, like, 
you know, it's a um, you know, it's a great show, and and I owe what my career is now to that show. However, there are so many pros to doing things like that, but also I think the cons are more personal. So the pros are, are, are the way your life becomes, and the pros are the experiences you have, and 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 kind of having that quality of life where you get to do some amazing things. But the cons, well, to, the, the the pros are the pros are artificial. Yeah, yeah. they're materialistic. Materialistic and they're things. Whereas the cons, I think, live within yourself. Okay, give, I want to hear these cons because I have. I, listen, I, for for me, I, I've. I'm the same as you. I I love what reality TV has done for me. And I would never it's kick like a it. Fucking therapy session. It, yeah, yeah, but this is great, baby. Great. Open yeah, up, yeah, open, open up, up fucking, yeah, I think it's better come on and get open up like open tin of beans up, by baby. fucking Jamie fucking Lang. <laughs> Jesus Go, Christ, baby. Fucking live out with warn me about this. <laughs> so I I'm the same dude. So I I struggle for it. Look, I I. I said this on the podcast the other day. Harry Styles got on stage, right, at, I think it was the Brits or whatever, and I want to repeat it because it's so good. He, he's the most famous person in the world. He got on stage, he won the Brit, he's won the Grammy before that. He can say whatever he wants, anything he wants. Mm. And he gets on stage and he says, I want to say thank you to the X Factor, I want to say thank you to my mm -hmm. four brothers, you know, Liam, all those kind of, and Nah, whatever. And, and he could have said anything. And you've got people who are nowhere near as famous as him, mm -hmm. who've done the X Factor, who reject it, mm -hmm. whatever. He still has his issues with it. You're the same. You're not. Say, you're saying thank you 100, which I do. I, 100. percent Thank you yeah, so much. Man. But what it does, reality TV to you personally, can really affect, and it does affect you. It affects everyone you sit. So I want to know before I say what, 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 how has it affected you? What are the negatives you felt from doing it? And be honest. Come on. Um, in terms of. Uh, how I think about myself more than anything. Yeah. I think um, I struggle with not feeling like I have a real job. Yeah, no purpose, right? Yeah, like what, do you know what I mean? Like you do the best you can in what you end up being, but I'm not one of them that has an end goal of where I thought this was going to take me because I never really expected to be doing that anyway. I had an end goal based on a career that I had before mm. um, and I expected to be in different places than, than what I am now. Mm. So I struggle with the fact that I don't know what I'm doing a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You're just sort of like... But I don't know if any, like, anyone really does know what they're doing. Yeah, it, but it's, it's like when you have a career or you have a set kind of goal in life or, you know, if you're if you're doing a job and you, you, you kind of have this um, pyramid that you're working towards being top of a food chain. Mm. But I'm in an industry where what what's classed as the top of the food chain and what is it that I actually want to do? What is a success in my eyes now? And I don't think I am successful. So what what is it that I would consider successful and I don't know the answer to that so it's like working towards nothing God, that's so how depressing why have you, why have you just made me depressed that's um, exactly but, what we're doing what but, are we working but, but towards that's, that's exactly it so, so you, you know you, you have yeah, you're right, opportunities dude. and you and, and you sort of you know you do the best you can in every one of them and I always would hope that I do the, the best job I can and give 100% to whatever I do mm. but what's the end goal for me for so long what happened was is that I was like, okay, what a success! And we grew up. It's this, subjective, though, isn't it? It's totally it's subjective. Completely. But but I think you, you and I are similar ages, right? And so we grew up thinking, okay, success is if I drive with my Ferrari. Yeah. If I am balling around with like 20, 20 girls and like going to clubs and things like that and all those kind of things and all that kind of sort of idea. That's what I thought success was. Yeah. And then when you start, you know, firstly. It doesn't matter how much money you have, you always want more. It doesn't matter how many uh, women you have, always want more cars. Whatever yeah. you're into, whatever your thing is, there's never enough. Mm -hmm. So then that First can't... First title I ever got that, mate. What? It's never enough. Is it really? And I was 15. <laughs> but you didn't live by that. I was a deep child. <laughs> what? I swear to God. First title I ever got. So really? It's never enough. Where is it? It's there. And I think it was supposed to be in Latin. It probably says fuck off. But um, yeah, that's there. And I've kept it. I've, I've kept that one because it's the first title. Really? Yeah. But the, so that for me, it was like, so there's never going to be enough. So that, so success, now what I realize, can't be based around that. No. It has to be based around loyalty, family, friends, trust, all that kind of stuff. And, and But you learn that quite late, I yeah, feel. Yeah, you do learn that late because I think you have to go through um, trying to find your way in life by realizing that when you have those things, they don't make you happy. Mm. The one thing in life that I want, that, that I don't have, and I will strive for probably for the rest of my life, and I think a lot of people don't have, is peace of mind. Without peace of mind, you ain't got shit. You really have nothing. It doesn't matter about money, it doesn't matter, you can make money if you need to make money, you can fucking do things, you can, you can do whatever if you have 
it in your head that that's what you want to do. And I genuinely believe anyone can do anything. Some people, you know, I'm really, really fortunate and, and, and so, so lucky to have a lot more opportunities than people. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm so lucky for that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to make me happier. Mm -hmm. You know, I know people that, that um, are living what people would consider a really normal and average life and they are so happy because they've always wanted to be a father and now they've got a kid and it just makes them so happy and he's got peace of mind where he's just like, this is all I ever wanted. I don't know what that is for me, and but that's the position I want to be in. That's I, I want to be able to go to bed at night and go, do you know what, you ain't a bad geezer and you've done something with your life. And I haven't, I haven't got that. P, that's great. There's a, there's a quote in um, uh, Meet Joe Black of all things where Anthony Hopkins, great, great Anthony Hopkins, one of my favorite actors, unbelievable dude. And at the end, he gets up and does a speech, and he says, "I'm, I'm a, I'm a blessed man because I wake up every day and realize I don't need any more." That's that, that is the point. That yeah. is what happiness is. The rest of it is bollocks. The rest of it is short-term happiness and things that make you smile for a bit until you realize what reality actually is. And reality and life is a fucker. It is, That's man. That's very depressing. Yeah. <laughs> Cheer That's up, Pete. Fucking I'm going to make that into the clip. Yeah, there we go. That's it. That's, <laughs> That's Pete done. That's it done. I agree with you, but then... But things in life do make you happy and, and do make you content. And so, you know... Okay, you, you, your family makes you content, your friends make you content, your, mm -hmm. your dogs make you content, all that kind of stuff. And I think with you, actually, you know, because I see stuff on your social media. If someone sees you on TOWIE or has seen you and doesn't know who really you wanker. are. Wanker. No, I, I, same as me, right? And I want to say, say it, Jamie. Wanker. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't say wanker, but I would say not the sensitive soul, caring soul that you are. I, I would say that. And, and, you know, the same, similarly, that's what reality yeah. TV does to people. You become a persona, don't you? You become, you, yeah. you, you become a caricature of yourself. Yeah, and actually, what you are is you're giving, you're caring, you're you know, people people that I met who who really know you. Firstly, um, I remember chatting to a, a, a mutual friend of ours, and they're saying, "Oh, Pete's got the greatest energy." You know, you, you, they said that said you had the greatest energy. Drunk were they? Oh, well, they they just <laughs> thought you had this like soft, like great nature, and I think that's then not relayed when people know actually who you are so it's it's like okay so you say you don't really know what you 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 want in life but actually if you really thought about it, i think you probably would like it, would that be a relationship do you think um i don't necessarily think that that is the pinnacle of you know i'm not one of them that believes that being in a relationship is is something that make you happy i would love to be in a relationship. i would love to get married i always said i never wanted kids but i would love to have kids one day mm. but i would only do it um if it was, I really felt was the right thing for me to be yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. I don't necessarily think I'm, I'm in a position where I'd be a particularly good dad at the minute. Um, too selfish, maybe like me. Too selfish, and I think too um, driven. You can't, you can't mix yeah, the two. Yeah, hundred percent. And I want to be in a position where you know I can be the best dad that I can. Do you know what I mean? And and I want to be the best you know boyfriend or husband that I can. And I'm not in a position where where I feel like I can do that because there are too many things that I need to work on individually and selfishly before I can be the best version of myself. You know, you always want to be a better person and, and, and I don't think I'm at a point where I'm a good enough person to be able to give my real self to someone else. I think you block people though. Oh yeah, massively. Yeah. Why'd you do that? I don't know. Stop don't being know. a freaking prick. Just like, know, open yourself up. Yeah, grow up, dickhead. Yeah, yeah, no, but it's um, not even that. But I think what you do is like, it's almost like, and this has to be, and like, I'm not some therapist, so I have no idea, but. You have it, a good go at it. Though. I'm freaking going for it, dude. <laughs> I've never got this deep oh, in my life. Jesus I know. Christ. I might lay down in a it's, minute. It's because I've had a pretty Show me these pictures. What do you think of? Fucking, <laughs> <laughs> it's butterfly. It's because I had a pretty <laughs> That's, that's <laughs> death. <laughs> It's, I've had this pre-workout and I'm like yeah, I don't Jesus know well, so what do you think I mean I don't know it's like we're 2am in Fucking, an after party yeah, <laughs> it actually is who do you think built the pyramids Egyptians or aliens um, what's your problem with Santa well there's this guy down the road who touched me no um, but, but, <laughs> yeah, but the thing is is that you I, it, okay okay so and look if we it doesn't okay on and off screen whatever you've had like this whole like you know people see you've been in all these different relationships with Sometimes, like really close friends, you fall, you you fall and fall, whatever. Well, who knows if that's true or not? But you've you've definitely you've had relationships, and you, a good looking guy, you date, you do all these different things, um, and it feels like what happens is, is you get close to potentially becoming something, and then you automatically just turn that off. Yeah. You're like actually, you know what? I don't want that. Yeah, I don't like being close to people. But why? Don't like it. 
You must be what you, I genuinely don't like it. I, but you I, like are you, but you like giving to other people. Oh, hundred percent. So you like making people love, feel happy, I but you don't want to do it to yourself. Pe- I love making people feel happy. I some, if if you really want to go into it, yeah. I, I sometimes think I, I probably don't I don't deserve to be happy. I mean, Why? That's probably, don't know. Don't know. This is very deep, Jack. Yeah, but dude, this Jesus is great. Jesus fucking Christ. This is freaking wonderful. Fucking, I'm, 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 it's called private. I thought you were going to talk about my dick or something. <laughs> I'm fucking sitting here talking about my deepest, darkest feelings. Um, Jesus Christ, I'll just get my dick out. That'd be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll do that yeah, at the end. There we go. We'll do that at the um, end. Come yeah. on, just, yeah, tell me. What is yeah, it? I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I, I think I've made a lot of mistakes, an awful lot of mistakes, and I've, um, I haven't atoned for them yet, and I, I, I need to be a better person than what I am and until that I don't deserve I don't necessarily deserve to yeah but do but you just said say which I agree is good people do bad things and bad people do good things yeah. we all do that yeah I believe I'm a good person you are that. a good person same as me I've done bad things right um but you need to get to a point where you un- it's like you know unlocking your full potential and I haven't, yeah. I haven't done that you know you can do as many nice things as as you want for people but actually none of it matters it doesn't matter how anyone else sees you it really doesn't whether it be good or bad it mm. really has no impact on on your life it's nice to hear things we all like an ego boast and we all like you know to for everyone saying oh, what a wonderful person that's shy but it really means fuck all unless mm. you feel that about yourself because really what your self-worth is and whether or not you have the ability to see yourself in the in the same you know through the eyes of other people it really doesn't matter what they say so so if you had to say your close circle how many people in your life do you go like this is my close team this is who i trust and i love how many people is that would you oh, think there's lots of people i love there's, there's a di- different you know last year was probably the most horrendous year of my life I, I i lost my best friend my name was my best friend i know man she was fucking everything to me so um you know my mum and my nan they're my you know if i'd have got married she would have been my best man Fully, she was my best best friend. Man, so, that's gonna make you now making me fucking emotional. Um, what the so, fuck? so yeah. So it's been a really you know tough time. I lo- love lots of people, but in terms of who 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 I, Pete, I'm so sorry, with, dude. Man. Oh, mate, that's all right. It's you know, it, stop shrugging it off. It doesn't matter. It, we can get, like honestly, that is it is what it is, isn't it? Um, but yeah. So 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 they would have been you know they're the two people that I trust in my life. And other than that. Um, you know, I love a lot of people and I'm very close to a lot of people and it's really selfish actually on my part because I want to be the person that everyone else trusts. You know what I mean? I want to be there for everyone else, but then I, I only give them half of me, which is really selfish actually. And it's, it's, it's hard for a lot of people because I want them in because then they, they you know, they want to be there. I know there's so many people over the years yeah. that would have done anything for me and, 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 and have been so good to me that I have not given that same respect back to. And that's fucking out of order. I don't think it is, dude. I think, like, I don't. Very deep. <laughs> Jesus Christ. For, you just made me, honestly, you hit something. There's a whole fucking room of people. Be, oh, sitting there. I know, and they're, all, and they're all pretending Christ. to be working, yeah. and, just, and they're all listening. Suddenly the fucking typing <laughs> stopped. I know, I know. Honestly, you put, like, a bubble in my throat there, dude. Ah. Oh. Like I, I have this big thing, right? So I was sent to boarding school at eight years old. Crazy. And yeah. I, and, and, I, and I, your parents didn't like you either. Yeah, man, I yeah, spoke I to my, to Sam all the time. It's mad. Fucking mental. I spoke to my dad about it today, actually. And, and why did you get rid of me? Yeah. Well, I said to my dad. My dad and I had a pretty strange relationship, and it was my fault. Parents got divorced when I was like and eight years old, whatever. So pretty. Yours was eleven. Yeah. Mine was eight. It's a pretty tricky time to deal with these things. My dad was definitely still in my life. My mum sort of brought us hmm. up. My mum's a rock. She's a legend, and I and I, that's why I have huge respect for women. Oh, I just you're it, for you, because yeah. you know I just my mother what she did was amazing. Mm-hmm. However, there are two sides to every story. Yeah, completely, hundred percent. And so for so long, I kind of. Uh, was angry about situation that happened that my dad did but then as I grew up I realized that my mum is a bit of a nightmare yeah. you know and things and whatever happened and so that especially the last like year few years in particular I've grown that relationship back with my dad yeah and and I I sort of said to you know and I said to him you know born in school this he said you know what I was doing my thing I was selfish all that kind of stuff so I get it right and yeah. he had the means to pay for that so yeah, he yeah, did yeah. it but I'm jealous um of that amazing relationship you have with your family because mm. I have that as well but it's definitely scattered like we I was born in school for the age of eight so I don't have as that closest we'd love each other immensely I'm there for them every single day mm. but not three musketeers style yeah and that's amazing yeah it's, it's, I'm so so blessed and fortunate to have that and I, it, it comes from um, when shit hits the fan and, and, and times are tough and, and, and things are shitty that's when you realise the measure of, of what a person is. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and both of those have not had the, the you know, my mum and my nan, neither of them had the best lives and, and, and yet they are still the most incredible, inspirational people ever. And if I could be half the person, you know, my, my nan was, then I would be over the moon because to be 
to have the, the the kind of energy and ability and compassion and empathy and just general beauty that she had is do you know what I mean I, I, it's just you know I'm obviously biased mm. but you know I, I think it's it's fucking incredibly rare and she was just a fucking angel an absolute angel oh my god Pete your heart is unbelievable um I, I think just going back to um, Taui and things like that, the uh, you must yeah, have let's had, lighten it up. A okay, bit. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> don't I, want me to slag off. Man, I freaking just I did honestly I just love it. I love I, I just love it when people come on and they're just vulnerable and they open up and talk about this kind of shit. Because fuck, man, life is tricky. Doesn't matter where you're from no, or what you're man, going through. We all have our like our ups and downs and shit like that. Do you know what the, the worst thing is? And, and one of my biggest problems that, that with with people and the way people talk about things is that it doesn't matter. You don't have to have had an awful life or a terrible fucking upbringing yeah. or, or whatever else. If you have a problem, it's a problem. Yeah, you know what completely. I mean? you, you can't judge someone based on oh well they shouldn't have a fucking problem because they've got this and they've got that doesn't matter yeah. does not matter you can't understand what anyone is feeling and, and the beautiful the beautiful the beautiful thing <laughs> oh, about the, the beautiful um, <laughs> thing about you me and everyone is that we are completely and utterly unique and that is your superpower you'll never know you've just got married so Sophie's your, your, you know, yeah. your best friend and you yeah. spend all your time together but you'll never really know what she's thinking or feeling despite how much she tells oh, you oh sure, that's the thing that sketches me out the most sometimes but, but that's you'll never know despite what she tells you and, and, and despite how close you are you'll never know you'll mm. never fully be able, to, uh, be able to understand and you can try your hardest but actually what's deep inside you and, and me and every single person is something that you can't explain to anyone yeah you can't and that's why you can't fucking judge people based on their experiences against yours it doesn't matter what your experiences against theirs are yeah. it's their experience and you cannot have a, a, a say on that you yeah. just can't you're so right, dude. Um, listen, your your relationship with Sam, one of my buddies, you know, and you got him. you guys, no, dude. You guys know. are freaking. Come on, it's honestly the weirdest relationship. It's the weirdest <laughs> relationship, and 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 he sees you like your brothers. Honestly, yeah. you, you're 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 like brothers. Yeah, it's sort of. Yeah, I mean, I think he seems to be yeah like a brother slash carer. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it's the mate, it's the weirdest relationship. And ordinarily, he's the sort of person that I would, um, I would want to repeatedly stamp on his head. However, he is just such a genuine, lovely guy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, such yeah. an annoying prick. But there's something so lovable about it. Yeah, it's, it's so lovable, and it's you know, if I'm really honest, and you know, if he sees this, he'd probably knock one out. But. Um, he's he's also he's my brother you know what I mean he's the brother I never fucking wanted but he's my brother I love him yeah yeah I remember it was so funny I, I, you may not remember this you you guys were just about to go and do that Celebs Go Dating show and we saw each other in Sheesh and you won't remember this and you, we I came over and said hi and we, we gave each other a hug and it was one of those things like we, we'd, we'd met briefly before but it was like you did reality. I let, oh, we're mates. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're mate. mates. That's such a thing. Like the, the industry thing, thing. Isn't it? You see people out there have done big TV and you're like, all right, pal. And you're like, how you been? You're all right. How's the family thing? Who the fuck's that? Wait, I did that to, I did that to Emma Willis once. <laughs> oh, how did that go? Oh, oh. We were, I was in uh, uh, the restaurant Rocker on Charlotte Street. Yeah. And... Um, she was at a table and I had just done a show that she was on and I mean it was back in the day anyway it, going down the stairs there's like, there's like a glass thing yeah. and down to the toilet bit down to the toilet yeah. bit and she was sitting on a table and I was I, I reckon for about eight minutes I was standing there trying to catch her attention oh no trying to catch her and I was just trying to catch it like that yeah. oh yeah she finally looked up and saw me and I went <laughs> like like I just caught her, I turned and walked straight into the glass. <laughs> oh, you fucking nuts! I walked straight into the glass and then looked back at her, and she's looking at me, and I went, <laughs> and I and then I pretended to do it again. I'm like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, mate, that's so awkward. That's so fucking awkward. Right, it was the how long ago was this? I mean, the like, fact that you still remember it and have gone so red about it is that shit, one of the most dude. painful. Ah. Oh. I mean, to be fair, there's been a lot. I actually have you had, ever had those experiences? Oh, I had one on uh, Monday night. Okay, give it to me. Oh, this is really bad. Um, so I went to see Elton John on Monday night. Yeah. The O2, fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah. Farewell tour uh, until he does his next farewell. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm in the toilet. I have feather bar on because I'm in the fucking bar and you've all been glasses mm. and all that fucking. I didn't just wear a feather bar out. It was part <laughs> of the, the thing. I'm um, in the toilet and I'm washing my hands and this drunk geezer's coming. There's a guy at the cubicle, uh, a guy at the urinal. This drunk guy's coming and going, oh, fuck you, you look like you play football. 
but you look like a gay footballer on a feather bowl run. Um, you look like Declan Rice. I went, oh, mate, you should bring your bird there, I shag her and prove I'm not gay. And also I'm better at football <laughs> oh than Declan Rice. Um, and then turns around at Urano when it is Declan Rice at Urano. <laughs> God. <laughs> just joking. Oh my just joking, God! Just joking, mate. God. Um, oh. but, but, but to be fair, he, he, was, he was laughing. Um, and <laughs> yeah, 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 like, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then I saw him afterwards, and he was just like, "Yeah, sweet, mate." Uh, oh but yeah, my. really awkward. I do things like that all the time. Though. I open my mouth. I, 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 I have to stop myself from saying things sometimes because yeah. I'm, I'm quite bitey. Mm. But I think it's funny. I find situations like fun. I find awkwardness quite funny. So you you lean into it sometimes. Oh, I, mate, I love it when people feel awkward. I say random shit sometimes. Mm. You know when you have that uh, urge sometimes if you're just in a really quiet place and you just want to scream and see what everyone does. Yeah, yeah. I get urges like that all the time. So I say things just to test limits. Just and I never mean anything offensively by it. And I always apologise after if I am offensive, which happens quite a lot. Um, <laughs> but I just like to see how people react to things. I find it really yeah. funny. Sam told me this thing once that apparently um, you, you, you came home, you had some drinks and you nearly died or something happened. <laughs> yeah, it's during, um, no, that was during uh, COVID. Are you talking about the uh, carbon monoxide? Yeah, so what happened? Um, so uh, it was during COVID and um, I spent, I live in my own, um, mm -hmm. just me and, me and the dogs. Um, and do you remember like that, that period during um, lockdown where it was just super hot outside and it was mm. fucking beautiful? So I just used to get up every day and uh, drink myself into a stupor in the garden. Uh, just Great. tanning. By right, yourself? By myself with the dogs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, with the dogs. New, new so it dog. doesn't count. Yeah, don't worry, they weren't drinking. <laughs> Um, both for teetotal. It's absolutely fine. Um, so, I was with the dogs. I wasn't drinking alone. Yeah. And I ordered on... Um, yeah, exactly. It's not weird then, is it? Um, there were other people there with me. Um, so we're all, we're all having a laugh. Um, um, do you know what I mean? It's just a little three-way party. We're all having a laugh. and just getting along. And, oh, 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 lads. Um, and uh, but I'd ordered a shisha pipe off of uh, Amazon, you know, like because I, I like to so when you're out in the sun because I smoke. <laughs> so you're out in the sun. You ordered a shisha, so pipe. a full um, uh, shisha pipe, you know, uh, apple mint, just in case you want to know. Um, and but the coals, um, mm. obviously, you have to light the coals before before you do it. But I, my stove is is, is um, uh, like gas stove. Yeah, yeah. So the easiest way to do it because you can't just fucking burn them with a lighter to really get them hot is, mm. is to put them on the stove. So I've done that. So just turn the gas on, put them on the stove, heat up the the the, um, the coals, um, and um, I don't know how. Probably because I was drunk, just left the gas on. Oh um, so I'm outside and smoking this shisha, and then I've gone back in. There's a bit of a weird smell, and then something. This alarm started going off. <laughs> Well, I thought, what the fuck is that? So I'm checking the smoke alarms in the house. I'm thinking, well, it's none of them. It's all just wandering around pissed in my house. Just yeah. trying to smoke the smoke alarms. I thought, what the fuck is that? Don't know where it was. At the back of a cupboard somewhere, it was a carbon monoxide um, alarm, uh, thing. alarm thing. Yeah. Um, I found it. I thought, what is this? All the wild gas is still going. Um, then I started sort of being a bit, oh, I feel a bit lightheaded. <laughs> Um, well, it's actually not funny. It's no, actually it's not well, funny. Well, no, I, 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 you know, it went from uh, three of us just having a really good party to. Um, <laughs> three, the, so when we say three of us, you and the dogs. Yeah, me, Eric, and Peggy. Um, <laughs> just party. having, just you know, we were having a blind our Music was playing. We're all dancing, um, and uh, and yeah, and I had to evacuate the house. Um, because I worked out it was carbon monoxide and had to uh, fume get I had to send the dogs to my mum's to stay and I slept outside in the no, garden. No, you didn't. You slept outside in the garden. Well, yeah, because I didn't want to leave the house completely. And I don't, you know, do you know what I mean? Like the dogs were at my mum's and, you know, thank God I didn't kill them. Um, do you know what I mean? I do a lot for animals. That wouldn't have gone down well. Um, and so I slept outside oh, um, and just fumigated the, the whole place. But yeah, I nearly killed us, yeah. Is that the only near death experience you've had? No, I have them a lot. So what's another one? Um, oh, fuck, mate. Well, actually, funnily enough, when I did SAS, I nearly fucking died. Mate, that was... I was, un I was underwater, unconscious. So explain, you fell out of a... You, what did you have to do again? You jump out of the helicopter. Yeah. Um, and when you have these, like, 40 kg bags with you, and, and you're supposed to push it away just before you land, because you, you fall frontwards. My leg got caught in the strap, so I just knocked myself unconscious because I fell onto the bag. So I was just face down in the water, floating. <laughs> Broke a couple of ribs, which is still broken now. Uh. Um, and I was just face down, floating like that. Did um, they realise? 
Um, well, eventually, because that send that swimmer who turned me over and fucking slapped me a little bit and went, we're going to drag you back to the boat. And I don't know if it was adrenaline. And I was like, no, I will swim back myself. <laughs> um, so um, so I swam back myself and then got to Sean Fox. who was like, you're right? I went, no, not really. Oh, um, my and God. yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd taken on quite a lot of sea water. Um, it's another 10 seconds, I'll be dead. Pete, what the, is that show hard? Um, yeah, I'm, I, it's a, it's, uh, it, it really bothers me, that show, because for what? me, it's a fail. I, I know, man, but that's I not your fault. That's not because of the ribs. Well, doesn't matter. No, I, I think it was because I was unconscious and water though, more than ribs that mm. it's a risk, isn't it? It's too much of a risk, the amount of mm. water and, and, and whatever else. But I, um, yeah, I see that as a foul. I would love to go and do that again. I'm not a particularly fit, you know, person, but mentally I'm, I'm, I wanted to get to the interrogation bit and, and I wanted to do that and test myself in, on, on that side of things. Mm. Um, and I didn't get an opportunity to do it. I think that would take you back. Um, no one's ever done it twice, but I do think they should do a redemption. Man, 100%. Because um, you could see, I watched that, because honestly, because you were on it, so I, was like, I watched it, and when you <laughs> when you were huffing and puffing, I was like, fuck, because you were like, I'm really, you, you're, you're mentally there, 100%. Yeah, it's physically. just the, the fitness was, the fitness was great. And then when you got taken out, I stopped watching, I was like, oh, it's not as fun but anymore. Do you know what, the, the um, regardless of the, the kind of fitness, I will always, I will always be there. I will, I will never, do you know what I mean? I've never given up on anything. So I, th I think you can push yourself to, a, to a, a point and I wasn't at a point fitness wise I mean it was fucking tough because I smoked too much and I drink too much and I haven't been to a gym in eight years I'm not like mm. you you fucking muscle merry prick um, <laughs> you know, oh, look at me I'm at the gym again about pre work exhibit you fuck off twat um, but um, I was just having 10 fags and fucking put 10 <laughs> copies you said, be honest you boy came in and said I've had 10 copies and a pack of the fags what have you had I said I've had a pre workout <laughs> yeah I've been at the gym do you know what I mean I saw it in your stories just doing some bench pressing you fucking tit um so um, I forgot what I was talking about. That yeah, I would just I would just love to be able to do that. There's only two shows. You know when you do all these different things, and yeah. you've done a million shows, and, and and like now it gets to the point where you, you don't really want to do them anymore. You mm. know what I mean? You want to start doing your own stuff. And um, but there's only two shows that I ever wanted to do. And one was Bear Grylls, and one was one was the Island, and one which I did. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. The other one was SAS. And I was did, the Island hard? That's the hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah. Really? Yeah, man. But why was, though? Why? Because because. Um, it's just so out there. I mean, I lost, what, three and a half stone when I did that. And I, I, you know, I'm not a big guy anyway. I was nine stone when I come off. I looked like Gollum in a wig. You know what I mean? I'd fucking, I'd like a little hunchback, like a fucking little pigeon chant. Like, I was absolutely fucked. But it was, Is it because, because that, that is also, you're, you're alone with your thoughts. Oh, you had nothing. And nothing. I was a bit of a knob on that because I had taken it upon myself. Me and um, a guy who's, who's become a very good friend of mine, a fucking amazing guy, James Cracknell. Um, He's a good dude, man. Mate, me and him were like, and again, the weirdest two people. You yeah, could yeah, put yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a great guy, mate. We were like I did Strictly with him. For oh, the first mate. Year. he's a great. Oh, guy. Like, well, because he was messaging me during Strictly because actually, when he did the Island, yeah, um, which was four or five years ago, he had the choice of Strictly or the Island then, and he went, "Nah, fuck that, all the sequins and all that sort of stuff." Yeah. And then, obviously, a couple of years later, and I see why he didn't do it because um, he um, dances like he's, <laughs> <laughs> these legs aren't his. Mate, he, he he danced like he was trying to murder his partner. <laughs> mate, <laughs> mate, but honestly, he's the most intense guy. Yeah, he's yeah. the funniest he's guy great. he's just an amazing guy so me and him took it upon ourselves to become like the island um leaders like do you know what i mean so we were literally up every day doing everything get up do this assigning people jobs it was like a it, we we'd become you ran it you ran it like we were basically dictators you were, you were dictators that's we, what I mean. we yeah. literally it's like animal farm mate, you basically just started like controlling it we literally got there and it, it, it was like we who were do you think the world. leader is yeah <laughs> Um, but me and him never fell out. We, you know, we had different things that me and him were both um, uh, kind of good at. So we, between me and him, we're like, what should we get them to do today? Um, it was really quite... Yeah, but with, with, with reality TV, because you were definitely the Lothario, right? You, you, you definitely were, 100%. And you had all these... One, <laughs> one of the great... I remember... I, I never really... Wa I, I, honestly, I, I don't really watch reality TV. And I never... No. I, I, same as you, I, I, I like doing because it was business things like that. But I remember watching one scene with you and... Uh, uh, she's a mutual buddy of us, Megan McKenna. Oh, she's great. Yeah. She's freaking great. We're really good friends now. Yeah, I know no you are. Really, yeah, no she's one really great. understands. She's fucking amazing. She's amazing. But we were wild. You were, and there was a scene. There was a scene. There was a scene. <laughs> Which one? Where you were just starting dating. And I, I, I can't say it in any like sexy way, but you basically look at each other and the cameras are obviously not Oh, full. don't. This, mate, is this, is this the, the I really want to fuck you? <laughs> yes. Mate, Can right. you explain, explain what happened? Okay, this, is, this was really bad. 
So you know what it's like when you're filming, you're out, and it, it was our first... No one knows, I'm not really It was our like... first date on camera, right? Yeah. Um, so um, so for, for for how this works is, is, is when you do it, you go and you kind of film a scene, but you have, at some points they stop you in, in between because, yeah. you know, they've got a repo or, or, or like reposition the cameras or... Um, uh, you know, for whatever reason. If change you, something or whatever. Yeah, change whatever reason. So, and in those bits, obviously you don't just both sit there in silence, you know, especially if it's someone you're dating, you kind of have laughs and jokes together and, and, and whatever else. So it was in a moment where I thought the cameras had stopped. They've said cut. So you think... So they've gone, oh, hold on a second, hold on. Because we were in a restaurant, I think it, they were waiting for the wait to bring in the food and the drinks. And you know, they, they normally stop for that sort of stuff. So they'll stop so they can get someone bringing in food and drinks um, and then catch the rest of the conversation. So at this point, we're just sort of waiting. So obviously, you know, we just started dating and there was um, a fair bit of uh, tension. Um, and so I've, I've just looked at her and whispered, I really want to fuck you. <laughs> Not realising that the cameras were still rolling. And they would never put that in a show ordinarily, especially back then. Um, because it's you. Yeah, because, it, and then I remember, um, you know, we normally filmed like a week um, in advance of when Tower come out. So uh, about a week later, I my phone started blowing up with it being all in the press. Pete Witt says, and they subtitled it as well, which was the worst bit. Just in case you so, couldn't lip read. Wasn't yeah, just in case you couldn't lip read. And it, listen, it was fairly obvious what I'd said. Subtitle, I really want to fuck you. And there's a picture of my face looking like some sort of sex pest, just staring. She wasn't even in it. It was just me staring, going, I really want to fuck you underneath. And it literally, I swear to God, mate, I literally looked at myself and think, you disgust. Me on so many levels, I literally I looked like a predator. It was really quite bad. It was just me staring really intently and because you can't see the person behind of the situation. It genuinely oh. is quite frightening, dude. It was so good. I, I, I want to just touch on one more thing because I know you've been here a long time, take up so much of your time just with vices and things like that. Like, okay, you got tattoos all over your body, yeah. Right? You, 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 you like you, you like your drink, you, Fuck yeah. yeah, 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 you like. I'm drunk now. Yeah, no, I'm, joking, <laughs> I'm joking. You like you like um, you know you like sex or those kind of things. It, it, it what th those you like sex? Well, you do, we all like sex. No, but you do. But you listen. But you you know you, I've been single for you've been for, single for yeah, a long yeah, time. Yeah. You're a good looking guy. You're charming as anything. You, you know you, you, all that. Kind of, you like Amazonica. Like you're just <laughs> you're gonna have fun. So it, it is it because what is is it because you like the chaos? Like why why do the choice? And look, I I have tattoos, but not how come you tattooed your whole body? What was the reason behind that? Um, uh, I've got a incredibly addictive personality. Is that what it is? So I, yeah, I tend to veer away from an awful lot of things because I, I've got a very addictive personality. So, um, have you ever tried gambling? That's the worst. Yeah, I had that. And now I don't. I, I won't go to casino. I can't. I can't. Yeah, do I did it. that at uni. Poker um, was bad. Yeah, man. I, it's it's uh, anything that, that gives me. Do you know what it is? I think it's searching for, um, searching for some for things that make you feel alive. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, totally. think that, I think that's exactly what it is. That it's, adrenaline. It's, it's searching for adrenaline, it's searching for rush, and, 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 and it's, when you have that kind of mentality or personality, you have to control yourself. I, I'm very much like we were just saying, like quite a controlling person in terms of my life and how I do it. I do it my way and, and that's that. And I'm okay if people don't want to be part of that, but that's kind of how I'm going to do it. I'm completely in control emotionally in terms of I have to control that because I don't trust myself if I wasn't in control. So I don't let go and I don't like people being, you know, too close to me because I have to be in control of it because then I know, yeah, it makes because sense I just don't I trust it. it. So, um, so having like vices like drinking and I smoke too much and you know, it, 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 it's kind of like a release for me. Yeah. It's, do you know what I mean? But because that's the chaos. Because you had the control here, yeah, so you I mean, go like, I can do that. But it's under my thing. I choose to pick up that drink. I choose to do 100%. it. I choose to sleep yeah. that person, whatever it and, is. And, and and I could not do that, but yeah. I enjoy it. So why wouldn't I? Yeah, 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 yeah. Completely. I you know totally what I mean? The, 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 that that's kind of the, the where it is for me. And I, you know, I make a big joke out of it a lot of the time that you know I drink too much and all, all the rest of it. But I don't like. I, I just enjoy. It that's how I kind of am and I think that's the character that people assume because people look at me and think oh my god he, he looks like um, you know he hasn't had a bath in three years um, and he just smells of fags and uh, all and you lean things. into that that's yeah, volume I, turned up right because mate that that's when you when you kind of do this public eye fucking thing because oh, I hate saying that do you know what I mean it's such a knobhead thing to say yeah, yeah. but when you when you kind of do that you become the person that you don't mind people seeing you don't mind them pe taking the piss out of that because isn't that re is that the real you? No. No. The real you is is the way you are around people when there's not a camera there. 
yeah. there's a camera there you can be whoever the fuck you want to be and that's fine but the real you is the person you are that is for your people yeah and they're the people that matter to me if I was ever a dickhead to, to anyone that had met me you know privately when there's not a camera I'd be absolutely mortified and gutted yeah yeah because same yeah it's, it's true I mean? and, and it's always like when you do you know everyone knows everyone in this kind of fucking world I've never heard anyone say anything bad about you Mm. Which which says and you know although we you know we've met a few times but like we likewise though man yeah hundred percent yeah, like, yeah. And, and that's always the measure of what a person is, is 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 actually how other people talk about them when they're not there mate it's 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 uh, Jeff Bezos said it best your brand is what people say about you when you leave the room hundred percent yeah, yeah 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 and all the rest of it. <sighs> Do you know what I mean? Lean into it. Fucking take the piss because who gives a shit what Donna in Doncaster if she thinks I'm doesn't a wanker. matter. She's right, but you know she could at least make me before she says it. Before you go, I want to ask one question because I think we got to like figure it out this arc of our conversation, dude. I, I by the way, I freaking love this. I've absolutely loved it. I've, I, you may, it's just I've I, had a terrible time. You've had a great so. time. You've had a freaking great time. But you, I want to have like try and make an arc because it's like okay, when you, you need an out. No, I don't. Saying. Yeah, I need, this is the clip. We need an out. No, but I think no, you're 90 years old. You're sitting in your rocking chair. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, okay, the, my, you've seen your life, all that kind of stuff. You know, whatever's happened has happened. What do you want to look back and say? Right, this is I, I. What? How do we get to that place? Do we think? And you said I don't know what it is, but if you had to try and guess, get to that place where Anthony Hopkins said, "I wake up and I'm content." How do we find that contentness? Do you think? I don't think there is a way of necessarily finding what that is until you you come across it. But I do think there are things that you can do that put you in a situation where you may find that answer and that is to try and be as good a person we all make mistakes and that's yeah. okay it's absolutely fine to make mistakes no one's perfect and you know it, it you do bad things sometimes and you fuck up and, and whatever else but if you intentionally do something knowing it's bad then you're a wanker if you make a mistake then you make a mistake and you learn by it but the, the best way that you can get to a point where you feel content in yourself and happy about you having lived and, and done something that was worthwhile is to do the best you can for those you love and if you if you can't do that, you know, yeah. what are you here for? Pete Wicks. Hey, you fucking philosopher. That's unbelievable. Pete, listen, I want to say a big thank Just you. Just recited everything that's tattooed on my yeah. body. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Pete, um, I want to say a big thank you, man. Listen, I want to tell everyone, go and check out. Your social media is one of the funniest. You and Sam do some great things. You have check your out pod Sam's. I'm just on these. Don't bother with mine. Oh, There's not mate. much on there apart from selfies. But you've got Staying Relevant with the podcast, which is yep. so good as well. Go and listen to that, Pete. Mate, a massive thank you for coming. I really appreciate it, dude. Um, listen, everybody, we'll see you next week. Goodbye! Ta-da! Oh, mate, Pete, that was...